Robots Radio presents... Today's chat is brought to you by the support of all our Twitch subscribers. Through the patronage you provide the Focus Fire chat team through the Twitch platform, we are able to provide you with the weekly podcast as well as the website and other aspects of Focus Fire chat. If you have any interest in becoming a subscriber of the FFC and gaining access to some exclusive features over in the Discord server, please be sure to visit our Twitch account and click on the subscribe button. If you're an Amazon Prime member, remember that you do have a free subscription to Twitch every month that can be used for this. And for those of you who are already subscribers, thank you again for your generosity. Welcome to Focus Fire Chat. Explore together. Welcome to Focus Fire Chat, recorded live on November 20th, 2020. Gosh, over on twitch.tv slash focus fire chat as we continue our discussion over clovis bray's journal this particular episode will serve as what we have come to call the advanced session of the week's exploration congratulations to those who signed up for a deeper dive before we go any further however let's run through a quick introduction of who all we have with us on this show as always this is your host blue crew 86 and this is green eyed music lover i'm so thrown off (laughs) because i didn't do some weird thing in between (laughs) yeah Oh, I was well, ready for you to this be is, like Vex this is Milk the Mama's sultry, <laughs> sultry Vex Milk chugging, Carnitas eating, green eyed music lover. What? Otter Mom hates orchid. I can't tell if Blue is praying off to the I side or just face palming. I don't know anymore. Oh my gosh! All I have now, 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 all I have is the Mega Vex Milk meme stuck in my head. (laughs) So thanks for that, Green. (laughs) I broke Vero too. Uh, But anyways, um, so uh, um, I don't really know how to follow (laughs) that up. So uh, let's just say, look. General reminder, check out thelorenetwork.com where you will not get any of this nonsense. You will get just the, I don't, I, I'm so broken on this whole intro at this point. I had way too many 20s coming in and then Vex Milk Mama. So, yeah, we're going to talk about, save you? we're going to talk about Exos. <laughs> Orchid, I choose you. You can find us on thelorenetwork.com alongside many impressive lore content creators. It's almost like she says that like 50 billion times. Nailed it. Nailed she it. She does it way better than the rest of us. Yep. <laughs> Dancing, Dancing's helping me out too. Lore Network, iTunes reviews, Loot Crate, maybe. Um, okay, I could do all of those things. All right, do it. Yeah. I'm just going to um, leave all this If you this guys would be so kind as to leave us a review on iTunes, we would really appreciate it. Uh, five-star reviews really give us a chance for other people to find our podcast um it gives us the visibility that we need so other people can share in the lore of destiny and other stuff that we talk about um also blue creates great hey i don't even know what the code is right now it would be great if blue would talk about that How i'll about put the link that? i'll put the link in the show notes do and it. if you follow Blue the link crate. and then you use the code robots radio, you get, I think it's a 10, either 10 or 15% off the first crate. Um, ah, and then also, does that count on the, the big destiny crate that they're getting? It does <gasps> because I you confirmed that. that I confirmed it cause I got it for myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> chat is also liking me to make sure that orchid knows she is not fired this week. Thanks, guys. Um, Not fired. <laughs> so, Exos, getting getting down to the focused part of the show. <laughs> I don't know how much focus there is going to be. Uh, if we're talking about Exos a year, I'm, I'm, we're pretty yeah. much done at this point. <laughs> yeah. That things and, that we that in the conversation, yeah, things that we can converse about between the shows. <laughs> also, you want to know? Okay, this is. This is still not. This is. We're just going to kind of start diving into the slightly colorful first confirmation about Vex that we've gotten with Beyond Light. They have no genitalia parts. Yeah, it's really disappointing. Yeah, I'm going to have blue. To- <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, this is true. This is true. I'm so sorry. I love. 
episodes like this. I think they're hilarious and great ways to break up what we normally do. I just can't. Why would you do this? (laughs) Why are you the way you are? (laughs) You love me for the way I am. Oh, Oh, man. All right. So. So Vex Exos are created. Yes. Exos are created, we now know, with partially the influence of the Vex milk and Clarity. Why is that blue? Uh, The Clarity, so it's basically because of the radiation that the Clarity artifact uh, outputs. Uh, I'm trying to find here... So within entry nine within the journal, he basically talks about how, or Clovis talks about how he allows small Vex platforms. I'm, I'm kind of thinking like goblins, basically, is what he's talking about here. Uh, he pa- They pass through the gate and apparently intent on constructing infrastructure on this side. They capture those platforms, they drain them, and they discard the the remainder, the, the shells, and then they take the mind fluid and run it through clarity control. And because of this exposure, the al- what he refers to as alkahest flows back. Um, Why was this a problem in the first place? Because we we know oh that gosh. Clovis so, was trying to make exos prior to yeah, the whole uh, clarity control aspect, but it was never successful. He actually ends up killing his own son off. Yes, and this is where I'm kind of getting the sense that this is where we get the mention he doesn't call it out but i i kind of got the feeling that this is the long slow whisper um because basically human human psychology is kind of a it's a schrodinger's type situation like we we want to be one thing but at the same time we can't exist that way um so he says like Uh, let's see entry eight is basically his revelation that um when you expose the radiolarian fluid to the clarity the vex patterns break down and the fluid takes on some of the properties of clarity itself uh which is its reductive effect so if you then if you introduce a tiny aliquot of this refined clarity into an exo mind it solves the loop billboard crash cycle and as far as he could tell at the time permanently we find out later that's not actually true but he says that basically the combination of Vex fluid and clarity is the key to cybernetic immortality. Now, the problem here is that eventually this will come back to kind of haunt him with DER. Um, mm-hmm. But the, up until this point, they had not even been able to get to a point where they could they could start finding DER. Um, right, because they they would basically go insane because they would have essentially the same exact problems as his own son did in the fact that their brain could never re- like reset, essentially. It never basically had a sleep yeah. cycle. Yeah, yes, yes. And also, so the human brain, it, it stems from, like, it stems from the same thing the DER stems from. The human brain is such that we have evolved that we do things... 90% of what a human does is largely unconscious, like breathing. You know, breathing is something that when you think about it, you actually can stutter your breathing. But for the most part, you don't think about breathing. Blinking. You don't mm-hmm. think about blinking. You know, um, you know, you know, wetting your lips if so they don't get chapped. You know, all these different things. A lot of these things are very, very habitual and they don't they they take up processing power. And arguably within the exo body, they are not necessary. So breathing is 100% not necessary. Eating is 100% not necessary. Sleeping has been confirmed multiple times this season as not necessary for exos. However, when a human being, and, and to be fair, Destiny is not the only one who's explored this particular trope. Um, but when a human is introduced into an environment where they don't need to eat, they don't need to sleep, they don't need to breathe, they don't need to, you know, whatever, there are psychological ramifications for that because your brain is so hyperactive that it actually starts inventing problems. You know, we make fun of these things. They're called first world problems. It's when you start in creating problems where there are no problems because your brain it, your brain is set to solve things. That's the, one of the... The underlying structures of the human psyche is we see things and then we try to 
piece them together into a, a way that makes more sense. Well, when we start noticing lacks, our brain automatically wants to fill in those gaps and try to figure out why those gaps exist. So when you start being like, oh, I'm not breathing, well, to a to a robot who has never breathed in their life, that's that's not a problem. That's just like, okay, whatever. But to a human being who has an evolutionary track record of, hey, if you don't breathe, you die, there's an there's a instinctual and a very, very unconquerable fear of being in a situation where you can't breathe. Like, that is a survival trait that has allowed us to continue existing. So that's when you start getting into this concept of like, well, how do you manipulate memory but not erase memory what it where does where does the memory of an instinct disappear or where does the in, in memory of an instinct stop and the memory of the individual take place and within the the brain engrams of a human being that really has not really been discovered it's all kind of interwoven into our into what makes us us um right and that feeds into what is called the der effect with the exos um, once they figured out the Alcahes situation, which then, which was the solution to what he refers to as the billboard cognitive loop, uh, which is why early exo models could not pass, they could pass the Turing test, but then it quickly became aware that, or they quickly became aware that even though they passed the basic Turing test, they were not necessarily conscious. They were still in a loop. They would have the same conversations mm-hmm. over and over and over. So those conversations individually and outside of the context of the whole experience, those individual ex- uh, conversations would ha- would pass the Turing test. But then they come back the next day and he would have, you know, he would basically have to have the same conversation with that particular test subject. And they would not, they wouldn't have any recollection some wouldn't have any recollection that they've had that conversation. Others would have the recollection that they had the conversation, and that would also cause psychological stress because you know you've done this before, but you can't stop yourself from doing it. That is going to be very stressful. Um, and so that's where you get like a lot of the exos who are committing suicide because they're they're trapped. They're they're you know they're literally trapped. They're um, I think they even uh, I think Elsie calls it human minds trapped in a totally inhuman context. Um, that was her her problem with using the Vex fluid was because of what happened to the Ishtar scientist. She she made the point. She's like, wait, so you're creating a simulation within the exo mind to keep the exo mind busy and distracted. She's like, how is this any different than what the Vex did to the Ishtar scientist and torturing them. Um, and, and, you know, then she kind of brings up the concept of the grace of death, you know, the, the concept of, like, if you're immortal, you know, if you, want to pre- if you want to preserve your minds for eternity, why do you want to preserve your minds in a tormented and mutilated context for eternity? There's no escape. No wonder people are, you know, no, no wonder the exes are destroying themselves. Right. It, does he fi- figure out DER prior? Because he mentions it really early on in the book, if I remember correctly. He mentions the preliminary, min- like he. So DER is, I I would argue that DER is the ghost is a ghost that haunts the entire EXO project from the very inception to the very end. Um, it's just different levels of DER. Like prior to the discovery of Alkahest, I would strongly say that the quote der problem was the billboard problem it was the um the loop issue um the alcahest created the 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 i want to say he calls it like the white noise basically um hang on let me see yeah he it causes a psych cyclized algorithm that can serve as a random seed for the knockouts required to sustain a viable exomind um so basically he says, and this is one of his handwritten notes, he says, it's easier to say that the exomind is too stiff and deterministic to support a human consciousness, which depends on some random failures and turbulence to keep it supple. 
Clarity provides an algorithmic seed, adding error to every operation which replicates that original turbulence, so there's no more need for software emulation of organic chaos. We emulate it in the hardware now. Um, and, and, and he goes on, he says, The Exo mind is too harsh and cold. Clarity plus Vex mind is the spice, the secret sauce, the oil of easy function. So human brain, that basically, in short, human brains require a degree of chaos, even though we seek order. Like, yeah, that's that's well, the easiest way to say that. Life in general, typical life, needs a bit of entropy in order to continue to grow. You have to have controversy in order to grow. Yes, exactly. This is just another example of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but yeah, so the, I'm trying to find, I think that, I think that was the big call out for the, because when he talks, yeah. So when he talks about, um, this, uh, turbulence and this concept of cyclized algorithm, you know, that's really where I get the idea of like that's long, slow whisper that Cade mentions within there. The argument can also be made that the long, slow whisper is the networking connection that all exos share with the Deepstone Crypt. We actually get the the name origin for Deepstone Crypt too in this journal, which was a cool little nod. It is a nod to the Philosopher's Stone um, because of his obsession with alchemy. Um, I'm trying to remember where that was. I think that was either entry nine. I think maybe. Yeah. Interestingly In, yeah. enough. Yeah. Go for um, it. Your friend Micah Abram, that book has mentions of D E R and Long Slow Whisper. Mm. That is because, art. That is actually the one book that I have yet to read. I need to get to. So uh, the the father, one of the fathers, because there's actually a, a two male parents mm. and a young boy, and one of the fathers is a psychologist who gets called in to work with Clovis Bray on. Exos essentially to try to figure out how to solve this DER problem, and he's actually the one who helps establishes the protocol to make sure that they can process things correctly. Uh, there's and then yeah. the mention of Long Slow Whisper comes at a point where Micah possibly uh, meets an Exo that we are all very familiar with. I do I do remember seeing something about mm -hmm. that. Possibly. I don't... I, there's hints of it that it's not actual confirmation on that one yet. But that's the only... There, there really isn't much in there. It's just mentions of it, which I thought was interesting. But what about... So we talked about clarity control being an essential part of the EXO creation. Do you want to talk about the Deep Stone Crypt and the fact that Clovis has actually been collecting... Mm -hmm brains essentially uh, for years let's, let's take a break to break and uh we'll talk about his uh library when we get back <laughs> Gross. even in the darkest of places the light will always find a way through if you're like me then perhaps you're looking for more in-depth conversation about destiny law. Welcome back, Guardians. My name is Trams87, and I craft bite sized cinematic destiny law videos. So join me each week as I journey into some of the greatest mysteries of Destiny 2. You can find me on youtube.com forward slash Trams87. Stay safe. And Godspeed. Actually, the concept of what he's doing with the library of sorts is, again, not something unique to him. Uh, mm -hmm. It's You'll see that. I mean, you can go back as far as Noah's Ark to see that concept. Um, Noah's Ark was not collecting humans. Yeah. It, I mean, Titan AE, that is Halo, the Array in Halo. I mean, it's... It's a common, again, common science fiction trope that you collect the collective minds of a, of a species to make sure that they are continued. And if you look at his obsession with being the Luca, it does make sense okay. that he would collect that particular piece. I'm not saying it's not creepy, yeah. and I'm not saying that it makes, like, I'm not, I'm not defending it. I'm just saying it's not unique the to Destiny. 
the thing that's really dark, and I know we're going to probably do the lab notes book at some point. The thing that's dark knowing that, though, is that in order to get a complete scan, yeah. a proper scan of somebody's brain, which is the whole reason that Clovis Bray has not already scanned himself in, is it has to be destroyed in the process. Correct. Mm-hmm. Now, I will also counter that with we do not know if that library is composed of proper scans because he takes preliminary scans of himself and even of Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. And and he has backups of all of his assistants who are working with him currently. So like he does he does have I mean, there is different. Let me back up. You are correct for a full. I think it's a what is it the subneural a true upload for the maximum resolution subneural scan. Um, that's on entry nine. He says a true upload requires a maximum resolution subneural scan, and such a scan is invariably fatal. That means I will only get one shot. I will not take it until the exos are stable. I refuse to be an alpha tester of my own immortality. I'm like, is it a is it a thing to do? Yes. It's also a logical thing to do, which I'm like, uh, like I I I can I see both sides of that particular fence. Um, I mean, I have a different. Anyways, the the thing though is that when he talks about memory banks and when he talks about different types of memory storage it doesn't necessarily mean that all of them are those max resolution subneural scans um some of them are potentially you know just like checkpoints if you will um Mm -hmm. and that kind of derives from actually some of the stuff that's revealed within the um oh i just blanked on the book there one of the other lore books talks about um exos using a basically the the concept of a checkpoint to which they could be backed up to. And so if they died after a specific point, they could re-upload themselves um, to that specific point. Mm -hmm. Um, That being said, that indicates that you can take copies without fatally destroying, you know, the, the brain in, in particular. Right now, now there's to expand on that. There's also the assumption there that that does not require one of the max res subneural scans to be based off of. Um, there, there's a lot, there's like a rabbit hole in and of itself to go down with that regards. But I would just say the library that he has, I, th- I seem to remember him referring to it as being also containing all the people who are working in Evertide at right now, which mm-hmm. to me would indicate that they these are not the fatal variants of those scans. I think the people on Europa might be in a situation where they're like, they have the first, they have like, whether or not, whether or not they want to, they're going to be the first exos. Um, Take that how you will. But I don't think that means that all the scans within the library are necessarily max resolutions. Right. We also found out some information about, the and this is getting further. Do we want to go into the missing pages? Uh, I um, think we should. I think oh. I think that's I think they're game. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I definitely think they're game. Yeah. Okay. So, Orca, do you want to talk a little bit about what we found out in the page and the uh, extra pages about the uh, number the mi- the number of mind wipes that are on every exo the follow up number. Um, you mean like the number that they start out on? Well, that and just uh, how we get that number, because we actually got a little bit more confirmation, I think, on that. Um, we did get a confirmation um, on how the original number that they start on is zero. So the person that is still alive is considered. So Clovis zero is the original Clovis. I'm still alive and in a human body Clovis. Clovis one would be Clovis. I'm in a robot Clovis. And each mm-hmm. individual um, after that, Clovis would be Clovis 2, Clovis 3, Clovis 4. The thing that I find interesting that we got within the missing pages is there, at least when it comes to Clovis and Elsie, mm-hmm. there are very obvious reasons they get wiped. Mm-hmm. You, Jay, I no. see that face. Continue. No, continue. You, like, I mean... Clovis is a jerk. Really? Yeah. Shocker. I, I, wow. What? Shocker. I thought he was. He, uh, I thought he was a little angel. Philanthropist. I mean, 
he philanthropist. He can go philanthro. <laughs> the man mind wiped his granddaughter multiple times because he didn't like the way she was behaving. A minimum mm-hmm. of 815 times. Which is ridiculous. It's super messed up. Ah, to be fair, he does wipe himself eventually multiple well, times. He no, no, he doesn't actually. Uh, the Clovis, last one, Clovis one. Uh, so Clovis one. The reason that Clovis one did not have his memories was because he did not complete something called the Awakening Protocol, uh, oh. and he did not. So this is all described in Legacy's Lament. Clovis one was the exo frame that Clovis uploaded himself into. Um, this was following an event that allowed Clovis to also upload himself into the central AI unit within Europa. But anyway, but to go back to Clovis one, he didn't, he wasn't awoken. Um, he was awoken outside a protocol, uh, by win one. Uh, and this actually pissed off Elsie because Elsie was trying to keep up to the, um, protocol, but Clovis, the AI ordered win to awaken him and so when deactivated the awakening protocol and woke up uh clovis clovis one um the problem with that is that clovis one woke up with a no knowledge or no memory of what he was he had all the all the um benefits the so hardware he was in one of the the finest of the exo bodies he was. Uh, he had all the software benefits of Clovis. He had all the intellect of Clovis Bray, but he had none of the memories or none of the experiences. Um, mm-hmm. And so it wasn't actually until he went through the exo training protocol that he was able to complete, or well, he was given the choice for the identity upload, and he basically did a half half identity upload. He didn't get the memories. The numbers that Clovis one actually got attributed to his name from from Clovis two to Clovis forty three was when he and Elsie were taking back the Vex Gate. That's how many times he died mm. in getting that Vex Gate back. So they be- right, but in but in the very last one, he talks about not getting the memories and just or not. Basically, not having any of the bad parts of yeah, him there. Yeah, so Clovis forty three, um, Clovis forty three had the full identity upload at that point, and he told Elsie that he was going to completely scrub everything when he was reset. At that point, that's when he became. That's when he actually fully took on the name Banshee, um, because he basically erased Clovis. He erased Clovis from his his self, um, and then he gave the journal to Elsie and basically told her at that time that he was like, you know, basically either continue the legacy or burn it all down. I don't care which one you do. Uh, if you guys didn't... Did we talk about how Banshe, Clovis Bray is Banshee 44 last week? Yeah. I, think, yeah, I feel we like did. we did. Yeah, we did. Okay. Okay. Um, I also like, do. I, I also do want to call out that in Le- Legacy's Lament, um, Clovis and Elsie have the opportunity to completely destroy Europa, and they both choose not to. Um, that was in the recovered memory from No Two, and then also Clovis Forty Three's last memory, uh, the last two entries within that book. They talk about why they don't destroy the portal and why they don't destroy the main ai of this the of the facility they actually kind of give an explanation of of why they do that and that it's it's not necessarily the best explanation but it's it's at least a nod to hey this is why we're doing this do we think that other exos have the same process that they just died multiple times so you have multiple like the next generation of that exo coming back um yeah so like the this is again legacy's lament kind of talks about the concept of a memory bank and the rapid rapid memory degradation um from the cloud memory collection so there's there's a Mm -hmm. lot of there's a lot of concepts that get thrown around in legacy's lament that actually kind of tie into the way exos uh mind operates um 
so like when an exo first awakens on the on the block on the you know on the slab they're they're supposed to go through something called an awakening protocol uh, this includes basically the identity upload the establishment of a memory bank the connection to um, the cloud memory collection as well as at the at the conclusion of the protocol they have to go through the exo training protocol um, right and so that all that basically all all that does is that says hey you know you are now an exo and this is what that means and this is the connect you know like basically you know connect to the wi-fi here's the password you know all that fun stuff um, the cloud memory collection allows for scans to be uploaded to memory banks that then record the different checkpoints. The problem that they have running into, especially within Legacy's Lament, is because they are going through their um, their memory banks so fast, they actually literally start burning the hardware. Like, they start mm-hmm. melting processor chips, basically. Um so with regards to that, and I think in the logbook, um, he talks about the number. Gosh, I remember I remember him explaining the concept of the number at some point. And I can't remember if it was in the logbook or if it was in another in or another um uh another entries. I know he also talks about the tower glitch. Much, uh, much confusion and dismay has festered among staff working with EXOs. Endless reassurances are required. To ease transitions after memory wipes, I have applied the Avanti numbering scheme to the EXO names. After each, mem- after each memory reset, we will increment their suffix by one. Yes. If we, zero, index the human body, then Mohammed zero is the human muhammad one is the exo muhammad two is the same exo after one reset and so forth it's the explanation of going forward so it is the memory reset yes and um the avanti numbering system <clears throat> is a callback to avanti three who is the ai who wrote the music siegfried in the Stormwall. Uh, he has a mm-hmm. note that says, ask Avanti's trainers how they settled on the one, two, three suffixes. Numbers are perfectly defined, therefore inhuman. Is this suffix meant to mark the Avanti AI as non-human? So that's the... Also, that's there's the a call out. He says the integer is stored in hardware and should remain stable even into cosmological time. If nothing else, they will always know which draft of themselves Correct. they are. Which explains that's why... Which explains why when in Saladin's speech at the beginning of D1, he calls out the fact that there's a number etched onto the exos. J, the scannable in the tower. Mm-hmm. That talks about Banshee 43. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That means Clovis would have had access to the tower prior to becoming Banshee. Um, or, no, because I think, wasn't that scannable? him? decided to write it poorly and forgot. No, because I think that was him trying to log in. I think that I don't think that was right. him. I don't think that was. Nah, hang on, look that up. Because I, no, I it's think, it's underneath Banshee. Yeah, gotta gotta go listen. Either that is a uh, a slight mistake that doesn't quite fit in, or there's a possibility. No, 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 no. It's it's so at the, least technology. No, so it says the last login on this terminal was from Banshee 44, but he tried and failed so many logins as Banshee 41 that it locked him out. All those reboots might have finally gotten to him. So it's just him trying to log in as Banshee 41. It's just okay. Banshee being Banshee. He just says fat fingers instead of using 44. It, it, yeah, I mean, it could be anything there. Um, let me see. I don't... Okay. Just double checking. Yeah, I was no, like, no, no. Holy... I, I, was about, I was about to say, I was like, I'm pretty sure 100% that it was his login attempts yeah because the other the other scannable that talks about his reboots is in the bazaar and it's where amanda confirms that he's been rebooted 44 times and ghost <laughs> ghost says how can you remember anything at this point actually that is also explained in legacy's lament because banshee mm-hmm. in the exo frame that clovis built for himself has higher has a higher um resilience to that particular problem because he was built in a superior frame so it would make sense that he would have a little bit of an edge when it comes to that but to yes the black flag retaining the memories or uh, to be to be so like you know we have the call out on uh mars about 
uh, Exos being, I think it's like 20-ish is the, the advised number, but Banshee's like 44. Uh, but it would it would make sense to me. It ha- it's not specifically called out, but it is specifically called out that uh, Clovis's Exo frame is superior to the other Exos. Because it's, I think it's, um, uh, it's... Uh, Hector or Wesley, I can't remember which one. It's one of the other. That's one of the other exos that are with them. But he makes a side mm-hmm. comment of like, "Of course, he reserves the best for himself." Like they recognize that it's what it is. I think it's. I think it's Hex. Uh, no, actually, it might be Wesley. So if we go back to the exos that we do know of, we have no instance of blank one except for Ada. Which makes sense because she was created in a totally different environment. Also, there's a call out to Helga. Did you notice that mm-hmm. in oh, the yeah. um, mm-hmm. the journal? Oh, like yeah. Like Helga actually worked with Clovis throughout yeah. this timeline, which makes sense considering that she's the one who brought the information <clears throat> to Black Armory. Correct. She's also mentioned in the Bray Lab records uh, along with uh, Justin Wong and Agatha Fultz. False cog, and then someone I can't, I don't, I couldn't find their names, but Chambers and Menez are the other scientists that were the the lab notes from. Uh, Helga was the hang on real quick. Helga was the one who tested the exo arm attachment on mm-hmm. the Eventide colony. Which you want nightmare if you'll just read that book? Yeah, um, that that was one of the gentler um, failures. <laughs> The exo arm one, yeah, it, it it ended in a quick result. It didn't end in a bad result of extended <sighs> periods. They were all bad. Oh results. no, they were all um, bad. <laughs> this was just a quicker. But Lakshmi, Lakshmi, Lakshmi two, she's only had one memory reset since her initial shift into being an exo. Say that again. I said Lakshmi too would have only had one memory reset since she's been put into an exo body. Correct, which is why she has extensive memories regarding the bombing of London from the Fallen. I still want Lakshmi to be an actual exo version of Maya. Um, that theory still alive. That theory still alive. Mm, I don't see any reason it wouldn't be viable given the information that I'm aware of. I mean, it's it's. I don't see any. I I am indifferent on that particular theory. I guess I would say because I don't see. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I think that it would make sense given Lakshmi's strong connection to Future War Cult and Maya's obsession with the viewing platform. Um, mm-hmm. I, I I yeah, I don't think that would make any. But oh, Takeo three. Who else do you remember besides Cade? Different exos. Uh, there were there were a few. We'd... We have that episode too. We mm-hmm. did all the exos. That was when I was living in Kansas. Yeah, um, I have a list of all the light bearers that we know that have like you have Isa three. Let me pull this over real quick. We got Isa three, Anahara three, um, Apajita four. A- uh, Aparajita was actually an early vanguard mentor for the hunters. Um, yeah, Bjorna three. Uh, she was a Titan exo. Uh, Caliban, eight. Uh, she, mm-hmm. He was present with Tallulah. You have, you know, Cade six, obviously. Um, Kron, eight. Uh, you have Krimik, five. Uh, Dimos, 22. Um, what else do we got? Ariana, three. Fellwinter. Um, we don't know Fellwinter's true name, but Fellwinter was also a special case. Uh, Galleon, four. We have Gimbal, four. Uh, Griffin 11 was uh, one that traveled with Fell Winter back in the Dark Ages. Hungrin 3. Jaina 14. Let's see who else do we got. We got Lee 4. Lee was an interesting one. Lee was one of the members of the Six Coyotes. Uh, we have Leavati 12. Lisbon 13. Mainz. Mainz 5. I can't remember. That name sounds familiar. Uh, Marlinx 3. Matix 9. Micah, 10. Micah is another really interesting one. Micah was the one, was the hunter who was regarded as the den mother of ghosts. And she was the one that had a giant bone to pick with, um, oh, what's his face? The ghost hunter. Uh, ah. Oh, Savin? Uh, Cirrus. Cirrus? Oh, Cirrus, Cyrus, yeah. Cyrus? 
uh, the guy who was basically hunting down ghosts. Um, that's I, I I was hoping that we would get more of Micah Ten actually this season because she she has she has a very interesting potential for um, simply because ghosts are drawn to her. Um, but then we also have Nil One. Uh, which is an interesting character that was introduced actually this season. We know that it is a member. We know he is a member of the Praxic Order that was assigned to watch over Europa. Um, then we have Nietzsche 32, who is infamous for the introduction of one of our co-hosts' favorite ghost pulled pork. Uh, Rhetoric's three, Reed um, seven. His name is Glint now. <laughs> He's the best boy, according He's to not- Orchid. According to Orchid. Trash. Oh, that's not what you said on stream the other day. Uh, Rilla, Rilla 3. Best boy. <laughs> Saint 14. Uh, Shiro. Shiro's an EXO, obviously. Uh, Taiko 3. Tango 9, which is an interesting one. He was a sniper within the Vanguard. Uh, Thies 7. Tanasha 3, or Ash Raven, as most people will recognize her name. Uh, let's see. I think... And then the last one that I have is Yardum Four. He was in the Kentark Three. So yeah, there's there's been a few. I mean, we we have a few exos that are light bearers. Um, mm-hmm. And I know there's a lot of talk has um, there's a lot of talk about uh, the connection between the exo memories and the ghost resurrection and how that kind of messes with it. Um, which again given some of the theory given theory of the ghost origins and then now the confirmed theory or the confirmed origins of exos could be an explanation there too different frequencies don't play nicely sorry i am having a moment um let's see let's uh oh yes okay so the last thing that we want to talk about is the copy of the giant head the big headed big head which part of that did we want to talk about, Green, for the, uh, the, the Clovis AI? The fact, just the fact that it's still on IO, or not IO, on Europa, on Europa. and that it is... Um, it has been shut down. For now. For now, yes. Uh, as, now. Of, as of the end of Legacy's Lament, um, Clovis 43 and Elsie shut down the facility AI, which is an amazing amazing little piece uh it's really fun seeing clovis and elsie get like a uh, one last little dig at them or at at clovis bray um and i was, i think if i if i and this is me not being fully aware of much else i think there is confirmation that he is like we can find him in game is that correct sorry i'm still no you're fine you're fine um, let me see if I can pull this up real quick to talk about the Clovis 43 piece because I find I found that one really fun. Um, so, yeah, so Recover Memory Clovis 43, which is the last page of Legacy's Lament, which I really strongly, if you haven't already read it on Ishtar, I think it's a great read. Um, basically, they they walk in and um, it's, it's basically Clovis... <laughs> Clovis invites Elsie to come to the central uh, exoscience bay and she's like, I don't want to be here. And he's like, yeah, I know, but I have a present for you. And they go in and basically she, they, they basically do not let the AI talk, which is the best part of the whole thing. Um, He says, we're not letting this, his snake oil words land on slick ears ever again. Um, and then they say deactivate artificial. They basically they put in the the co- code and they say deactivate artificial intelligence. Um, and then that is that is the immediate prequel to his his request for the the full wipe, um, which is also the wipe is using the wipe that he does uses up the last of the radiolorian fluid or the alkahest um, as well. Uh, this is also where we get confirmation that Elsie has all of her memories from banks E1 to 815 now currently in s- stored on her current imprint. Something that I don't think she's explained, which is really frustrating, is how she is able to time hop or verse oh, hop since so it's multiverse. I have my own theories about that, but that would be 
if I start talking about that, we're going to be here for another, like, 40 minutes. So I'm going to let Orchid talk. I just assume that um, the way that they're parsing out, like, the way the season and the year is going to happen, that we'll learn more about it as things develop. Because they have a tendency to not give us all the information right away. So Yeah, that's true. I think we just have to be patient. Patience is a virtue, Blue. I'm not the one that... You're you're targeting the wrong person there. Green is perfect. <laughs> you're just closer to where I can see. <laughs> the look that Green gives. And on that note, what are, what are those shout-outs? Because I think that sounds like a shout-out for you there, Orchid. Uh, Orchid's shout-out yeah. is Green is perfect. Yeah, my shout-out is Green is perfect, yep. Green, what about you? How are you going to follow that up? She's got really great hair going on tonight. I'm admiring it. I don't know why I just pushed my cheek up. My <laughs> hair's up here. Um, God, it's almost it's 1130, guys. Uh, a shout out to both of you two for putting up with me multiple weeks. And shout out to Orchid for being amazing and able to juggle two different podcasts. I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I mean, you're you're doing it. You are seriously doing I'm it. Attempting something. Attempting and succeeding so far Ooh. is still doing it. I'm still not fired. Nope, not <laughs> fired. Chad has not fired you yet. Chad has not fired. They you. encourage you. Yeah. <laughs> they encourage. I love the how at every here. every start of the street, they're like, "Note, Orchid's not fired." It's like they they just like they they slide that in there as a reminder, pretty much every stream. They do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dancing. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I didn't know we had this power. <laughs> you, you do have this power. You can vote me off the island every single episode. I mean, you can vote however you want. This isn't a democracy, but vote. That's no. fine. <laughs> um. <laughs> Not going there. <laughs> Not going there. Uh, vote blue. Vote blue off. Oh, all right. That's why, that's why your votes don't count. Um <laughs> They only count when I agree with them. Don't you understand how this works? Um, okay, Clovis. <laughs> uh, shout out! Shout out to you guys um, for a sticking with the just sticking with us, like both 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 you two, Green and Orchid, and then also the chat and also the listeners. Um, you know, like I said on the last one, twenty twenty has been a been a year. Um, yeah. Thankfully, yeah. it's nearly over. Kind of. Um, <laughs> You know, I'm I'm hoping that, you know, by the time you guys hear this episode and obviously by the time we get back into live streams uh, next year, um, that we will have a little bit of a better environment, a more healthy environment, or at least people will have found a new new balance to the the new normal, as they're calling it. Um, but until until then, you know, as always, as we've said multiple times throughout this year and actually throughout the God, six years that we've been doing this, uh, our doors are open to anybody who needs an ear, needs a shoulder. Um, we are always here for you. We will do our best to help. Um, mm -hmm. But we really, really appreciate all the support and, and the patience that you've given us throughout the the past six years that we've been with us um with that i want to say for the last time this year thank you for your time yeah it's like don't do that <laughs> green, don't scare green, me green had a heart attack there for a second <laughs> uh, thank you for your time and until next i remember with wisdom we conquer stand strong stand tall and keep exploring With that, we'll begin to wrap the chat up. Thank you again to those over on Twitch for coming to spend your evening with us. If you'd like to join us for the live streaming of the episodes, please be sure to give us a follow over on twitch.tv slash focusfirechat. Links to all our episode archives can be found at www.thelorenetwork.com. Please be sure to email us at focusfirechat at gmail.com with any comments and or questions for the team concerning the podcast, and let us know how we're doing by giving us some feedback and a rating over on iTunes as well. So until next time, focus your fire, and may your light shine bright. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.